Okay, this feature we're going to go over today is called the automation feature. You'll find it under the automation section under the settings. So this is obviously a back office user manager level only feature. And so we have actions and then we have rules and then we have the activity log of all the automated rules that fired off with those actions um, that we've kind of created. So, you know, click on actions it'll take you here and so we can create tasks emails and webhooks we'll get into each of these individually um, but these are templates right so these are going to be created up front and we're going to create rules inside of them you know how we're going to create them and then we'll set up the rules when they should be uh, created you know when should a task be created when should we send out emails you know, when should we send webhooks? What are the rules that control that? Okay. And uh, those rules will be related to, you know, when you update a file status, a sub status, or, or a workflow step inside of a loan file. Those are your three uh, trigger events that can execute a rule. So first we'll go one at a time. We're going to do the tasks. You can see I've already created a couple tasks here. So let's go to the you know, as an example, make sure you get the appraisal back with valid comps within proper valuation range, right? So that's the task description. That's the subject, follow up with appraisal. Um, you know, when will this be created? We'll do this instantly. And uh, it's gonna be created by, you know, you can specify an assigned user role, who it should, you know, be created by, or we can specify a specific person in your organization that will be the automatic creator of this task. And then we're going to select a user role to be assigned. So whoever the processor is on the file is the one that will be assigned to this task. Or you can also choose specific people, right? So you can do either or, right? And then you can specify the due date to be three days after the creation date. The creation date is related to the creation of this task, right? So when the rule is, for example, um, you check off the workflow step that you've ordered the appraisal. Great. This task will be created instantly, okay? And it'll have a due date three days after that uh, you check off the workflow step, okay? It'll have the subject and then it'll have this uh, message here in the description and that's it right so that's that's an example of a task other tasks um, that you can see here and let's go back follow up with new lead before two days due date right so that's you know that's another task you know maybe that's related to a loan officer and here we specified a specific person as well and um, it's going to be created by a specific person here and it's going to be due two days after the task is created and it's just a note here hey please follow up with this lead before two days and, and pre-qualify them send out the term sheet if applicable etc right so that's your tasks I'm moving over to emails now so this is a simple email thank you for your loan request submission okay so let's go ahead and edit this see what's going on inside there that's an instant email. It's going to come from the loan officer. Again, you you know, in this case, it has to be one or the other, right? We, we you know, when you're when you're setting a from name on an email, you can't have more than one, right? So it's got to be only one from address. So you can specify it from a specific, you know, you know, person, or maybe it's just you know, loan intake at abc.com will be the default from name, and. Um, you know, and then in the body of the email, you can specify a custom signature, you know, based on the loan officer, etc. Right. Um, the recipients in this case, we're going to do the borrower, the co-borrower, and if there's a broker involved. Right. So if there's no broker, who cares? Right. If there is, they'll also be in that email loop. OK. So these are all the other types of roles that you can notify. Notice how we even have as deep as the file contact right a file contact can be you know any one of these roles here okay um, select specific recipients you know is there anybody else that you want to notify like a specific person 
on this email template, you can do that. Now here's where you can choose pre-built templates. Okay, so you can create a new template from scratch or you can pull a template from your template directory here. All right, and then it'll display everything right here. This little button right here, if I click it, it gives you some quick user-friendly tags that auto-populate the, the reference information here, right? So you uncheck it and it goes away. Um, but yeah, this is creating of emails, right? So in this case, again, we're just sending out a quick thank you email after somebody submits a new deal through the system, okay? And in this case here, webhooks. Webhooks, in case anybody doesn't know what that is, it's a way to send data, you know, out from our system to a third party. So a perfect example would be we're updating Salesforce, right? And there's a specific endpoint that belongs to your account in Salesforce. You know, I made this up just to give you an example. And, um, you know, that, that'll be your endpoint, you know, and then you can, you know, set the description here. And now we're going to say, all right, I'll instantly send this data, right? And then you set the parameter and the parameter value. So these are all like lending wise values here that we're pulling from our database from the loan and everything. Okay. And then here you need, you need to set what does Salesforce call, you know, our loan number. So we have, we call it a loan number, but what is it, what is it called in Salesforce? You probably need some type of unique identifier, um, in there. We'll, we'll, we'll add a field in here called the third party record ID. It's not here right now, but we're going to add that in the meantime, if you want, you can maybe like hijack like project name. That's like an open text field that you can put, you know, your record ID there for now. Um, but you get the idea. So loan type is, you know, that's, that's your field value in Salesforce. And then this is what we call it here. And so you get the idea along the way. The main one here is like status. So Salesforce, you have a status of your, of your record there. We call it a file status. And uh, that's the key thing that we want to update. The goal is to update Salesforce with a lead to let it know that, hey, we closed this loan or we're closing the loan, right? And there's a status associated to that. And um, you know, here, and this, is, this will probably be important. You'll, you'll have some type of token ID that needs to be passed along into the string. Right. You can sometimes pass it in the URL up here and you don't need to put it here, but you know, it's another way of kind of building out your, your full webhook string, if you will. If you need help with this kind of stuff, we're we're you know we're happy to help troubleshoot and, and teach you how to use this tool with, with with any other third party software. So many companies, you know, Salesforce, HubSpot, Pipedrive, they all support webhooks, okay? To to, to receive data in. So now let's go to the rules and like, let's look at some of the rules. Let's do a simple one, a welcome email. So let's look at the, the rules that we created here. So the rule name is called a welcome email, send welcome email on new loan inquiries and create task to follow up, All right? So we did two different events are created in this rule, okay? And the rules triggered when the primary status is equal to lead, right? So we know that every new submission that comes in we have it set to lead. Uh, real quick, uh, if you go to the web form settings on the branch level, okay, go to your branch list, go to speak, click on the specific branch, go to the web form, scroll down, full app or quick app. So let's say on the quick app section, okay, I want to set the default primary status for every deal that comes in. So in this case, it's application starter, not actually lead. So maybe I should fix that, right? So here we'll set this to application started. And maybe maybe I wanna leave it for both. Maybe it makes sense for my business rules, my internal operations that yeah, if it's a lead or application started, we definitely wanna send out a welcome email, okay? Um, and these are the tasks that we're gonna create. So when you click on this button, you know, you can see this is already checked off. So follow up with this new lead before two days due date. That's the task. Okay, so that's already done. And then let's do say email. And then this email template is already set up and linked, right? Thanks for your loan request submission. Cool. So 
That's it. Those two things will happen every time a new deal comes in and enters into these two different statuses. All right. So let's go back to looking at a couple more rules that we created here. We'll do the appraisal order follow up, right? Let's see what's going on there. So in this case, we have just one. All right, let's start from the top. The rule name, rule description. It's triggered when the workflow is equal to ordered appraisal. So that would be under your application workflow. You have several steps there. Order appraisal is one of them. Whenever somebody checks that step off, we're going to automatically create this task to follow up with the appraisal. You know, it'll be automatically assigned to the correct parties that you created in your template up here in your task template. Okay. Um, so you can, you know, you can do a lot of different actions, task, email, webhooks, and you can do them in the future as well. Right. So anything that's scheduled, you know, notice how, let me go back. Each one of these three uh, actions had the option to say instant or scheduled. Right. So if it's something you're going to plan on scheduling it, you click there and then you can set off how many days after. And then you actually have really detailed dates. So you can say three days after the closing date, you want to do something or date of the first loan payment or when insurance expiration or maturity date of the loan. So these are all date fields that you can enter inside the loan. And then you write rules against those dates if you want. And that applies for tasks, emails, and even webhooks. Um, so back to our rules here. Let's just look at one more for the Salesforce webhook rule. And in this case, we're saying, you know, update Salesforce with closed loan data. And in this case, primary file status is going to be our trigger event. When it is clear to close or close loan, both of those statuses are going to be a trigger event. To know, to, I want to update Salesforce when that happens. I mean, you could literally click on each one of these step, stages. So as your loan progresses through various stages, this webhook will fire and, uh, and, uh, and constantly update Salesforce with the progress and the milestones of your loans. Okay. So hope this tutorial helps. Let us know if you have any questions or feedback.